So last time when we have not started, just pattern matching we see. So I start the while loop and uh, this is a self-explanatory, right? Mostly like in Scala, if you want to learn, right? Uh, so you can practice first, type the code, or if you are not able to type the code, just at least cause you copy paste the code because while copy pasting code, you will be getting more idea, right? Uh, how the code is written. And then you can, uh, you can start, uh, and you can start the typing code because the practice is very important in the Scala because I know Scala is little tough initially, but when you, when you think, okay, how to define the variable, how to define for loop, so it's similar to Java, right? It's almost syntax is wearing Java. And because here is no indentation issue, because Java is color same, right? It's a free from language. So free from languages, uh, right? There is no uh, issues. Everything is running through the braces, right? So braces is making a block, okay? So braces is making a block there, okay? So when we are doing the while loop, so while loop we know it's a, like a condition, right? It's a condition. So when we start the while loop, so simply, okay, I will do in my Scala editor. Okay, Scala, not editor, Scala shell. Okay, CMD. Go to so have you guys installed the scala at least before starting spark you install the scala because you cannot do practice of the scala without installing this scala shell okay so you have to run this object main object dot main and we pass the null. So we are getting the values like uh, greater than 10, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. But when it comes to the 20, 20 is matching. 20 is matching, right? 20 less than equal to 20. And it is printing 20, but again become 22. But when 22 comes here, it will become false and then it will come out. So your loop is breaking. Another one is like uh, you have infinite loop type, right? This is infinite, right? It will keep running, keep running. If I show you, this will be keep running because here is no ending termination is there, right? Because you can terminate it if you put it some condition inside this and break a statement you can do. If condition and they say, okay, if A value becomes 100, then you will break. I'll be right now if I run, See, it is keep running. Okay, so I have to break control C. And then, and now I have to start again in Scala. Okay, <clears throat> so if you want to do in this one, just check condition and put a break statement. Then it will be breaking. Okay, so like what you have to do, if, if A, suppose I say A is equal, equal, okay, I say 40. Okay, then break. Break should work like this. Otherwise, break actually we define the other way. Actually, we have to make it a breakable type. We have to make a. Uh, Break a statement generally we gave break. So when we are giving, we have to do this way. So we have to add in the breakable condition and we have to import this one. Then only you can apply the break. So we have to we have to do this and then we have to make it breakable before your while loop. And this while will come inside the 
ब्रेक के बाद ओके एंड नाउ इफ आई एम गिविंग इफ ए इक्वल टू So this time is no error, right? So now I say main object. See, 40, it break. Like when it came 40, so even my infinite loop is there, but I have broken, right? I have break, I have applied the break. Okay, so it is, so same thing is here. So Whenever you want the break, right, you can do, right? This is the condition going on and by means two to increment. So first value is the one, then three, then five, then seven, then nine. And wherever the seven is there, it is break. So one, three, five is printing, okay? So it's very simple, simple program loops, okay? Okay, so here we have done this. And if I want to do some do while loop, do while is like first, there is no condition check. So at least your program will run for one time because it is not checking any condition and it is it is basically going to uh, print your value because the condition will be checked once first time it will be run so 20 is printing because 20 is matching but again then because 22 then the condition is not matching so first time it will run so do while we use when we have to at least once run and uh, this is same thing infinite one right because i'm giving a while to now we go for for loop so for loop we know many times we use in java or for i in python we use some collection so here if i have a one to ten values okay so i will use this arrow okay remember this is not a lambda lambda is a opposite to this okay lambda is this is the lambda in the scala is the lambda is equal greater than sign Okay, so lambda arrow is equal greater than and less than hyphen sign is for taking the value start from one and assign to variable a. Okay, suppose if I give the collection name here, so it will take one by one value and assign it to variable and this variable you are printing. Okay, so when I'm running, when I run this program, okay. main object now so it is coming like this so one to ten number okay it is running in a one loop oh okay okay so this one is running inside this loop so okay so this loop is different this loop is different so if i just change this one i just cut it this i keep it run this loop first because this is my separate loop and i want to say one more loop i want to run because i was running inside the loop inside loop so that is the reason it was giving the output like this. Like you are getting one, then you are getting how high are you? It is repeating like that. Okay. One, two, ten. One, two. Then seven, how it came? Seven. Oh, here is also one, two, is number is there. Okay, so one, how, how to so these all values are coming. And again, second to print a so one, two, three, five up to ten. Ten values are there, and then these are the one two three r is repeating two times because it's a set set will make it unique so one two three four five so five values are there these are the five values okay so one to ten is printing and five values are printing okay until is right it will not consider 10 okay in the for loop 10 will consider but in the until it will not consider it's not perfect so
so it is printing nine until means up to nine okay and this condition one is like if you're starting one but you are saying here you are checking the condition here right where the modulo operator reminder one so if you two is there then zero will come so that will not be matching one three is there reminder is one one person two reminder is one so one three five seven nine it will print the odd number will print it will print the odd number is it the same program if i want to run so what i should change if i want to run same program for the even number so i want to say i want to print even number for the same program what should i give Any guess, anyone? Can you repeat once again? If I want to use the same program, but I want to print for the even number. Uh, you like it A percentage zero? two equal to zero. zero. Yeah. So here, if we do zero, then it will come, right? Because we know if the remainder is zero, then it will come, right? So this one will be giving only even number <clears throat> so what if we add two equal to two what is the what is the result we can expect which two equal to two uh if uh for the for for loop mm -hmm. for two equal to uh, equal to equal to zero for that you said that we have to print even numbers what if two is equal to zero so, actually here you will what get value uh, error because the left value should be a variable it cannot be a constant oh, this one you are saying two percent is two yeah because mm -hmm. we see if you use this one okay mm -hmm. like this 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 you're saying this one yes please yes for the for loop no two okay this is correct or not what you are saying this is the one two percent is two right Two percentage. Yes, yes, yes. Like two percentage two. Mm -hmm. It has to be a variable. You cannot take. Yeah, uh, if you if you check, this will be always true. See, all values will be printing. So even if you keep it, it or don't keep it, both are same, right? You are just mm -hmm. saying two percent to equal equal zero. It's a true condition. So whenever a value will be picked up and it will be coming inside when this condition match, right? So all conditions, all all time the condition is matching. Now that's the reason one to ten is coming. Correct, right? So for but, hmm? no for a percentage two equal to equal to two, what might be the uh, result? Okay, so you are saying here we keep it here a only, but hmm. you are saying two. So only one yeah. value will come, right? Because wherever okay, it is chance is there like two will be coming. I don't think like two will be coming. Because modulo will not be giving either zero or one. See? Blank is coming. Because there is no yeah. chance, right? Because A modulo two always the zero or one, right? If you if you try it, right? Any value mm -hmm. you take it one to ten. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. You will not get the remainder two. So that condition will always false and no value is printing. That's the reason empty is coming. Okay. Okay, so in that case, we have to use only zero or one and zero for even numbers and one. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. Okay. And you seen that one time you printed one three five seven mm. one three five seven nine. Other yeah. time you print the two four six, right? So remaining gotcha. numbers. Okay. Yeah, got it. So this Thank condition you. is uh, never come right. Means mm. always false, and false means it will not allow to enter in this okay. condition. Print. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so one is the yield function is there. Like uh, this yield function is like I'm just having a buffer. Suppose I say I'm starting from one, then I started one, two, three. So it will not immediately give to this value. Generally, what happening here? Whenever you are uh, iterating, when you are iterating, your value is given to this one, right? Result, right? You are assigning, right? But here, what will happen? It will keep it in a one buffer, this A value, okay, like one, two, three, and as a collection, it will come. So as a collection item, it will become, and then you can iterate the result, okay? So if I, so now you will ask, right, what is the use of this, right? Because 
I'm making it collection so I can create a one list and I can add manually also. Okay. But e list. Okay. E list keeping it buffer, right? Sometimes you don't want to suppose I'm starting from some point. Okay. I say I have to give you the your final year marks, right? Final result, right? So you are not worried about uh, like your each terms marks because each terms marks is important, but final marks is depend on the all terms marks, right? Correct. So, so I'm keeping it hold the marks, right? Okay. And when the final is coming, then I'm giving you the total marks, right? So yield function is basically keeping the value in the buffer. And the advantage is it is creating as a collection. So you don't need to create a manual collection, right? Okay. Like otherwise what you have to do, if you, you iterate this one and you create a one list object, add one by one value, right? And then your collection will be ready. Correct. But here it's creating a collection. Okay. Now you see the advantage of this one, like this hello world I'm doing. Okay. Suppose this is my hello world string. Okay. Hello world string. I want to do reverse of this string. So I created one for loop. I'm saying here my str dot length. I start means the exclamation where it is minus one because it start from the zero. So how can I take it the last position minus one to zero by minus one minus one is the decrement of the value. So first value will come 10 then nine, eight, seven like this. It will go like that. Okay. Nine, nine position will start nine position nine position means zero to nine means total characters are 10. Okay. So when I say nine here, nine, this one, nine, this is the eight position. This is seven position. This is six, five, zero, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. So minus one, minus one. And what it is doing, it is holding the character as a collection. And then I'm doing MK string again, making it my list to change to as a string value. If I don't do this MK string, first you check what you have done, right? Okay. I'm not doing MK string. Okay. So you will see one by one characters are coming. This is not my output because I want to get the output as a string. So what I did, I use dot MK as capital. MK string is a function to convert your uh, character to concat and create a one string. Okay. Can you see this is the reverse of the string? Right, right. So if this string is reverse or not, I can I can check like palindrome, you know, like when we want to check the whether the string from left to right or right to left. So there you can tell whether your string is a palindrome type or not. Like there are the some strings are there like madam. Okay, M A D A M. So this is the one A B A or you say A B B A. Right. These are the palindrome. So if you do the reverse of this one, you will get the same string. Okay. And when you are getting the same string, you can match with the if condition. You can say, okay, but I have override on this. So I have a reverse. If I say reverse equal equal str and then Then I say print Ellen. Palindrome. And uh, anything I can print. because it's not matching, right? So I have to use the else condition, then it will be doing, okay? But suppose if my string is the palindrome type, so I create well str.
now i will apply the same if this one on my str okay now i will check madam is coming right both are coming now i will use the if condition Okay, this is the problem here. Again, braces of the okay. So it is when I'm printing it, okay. So it will come its parent down. Okay. So when I print it, then it will show here. not parent from so, so my str is there reverse is there both are there so my palindrome madam is coming okay so my value is coming okay like this is coming so did you understand the yield okay so because this is very useful right when sometimes we need a so now next is, right, suppose I have a collection list. I want to iterate the list for the for loop. I told right this less than hyphen sign and I can give the list, okay? There are the many more uh, variations is there in the for loop. So one is a for each is there. For loop is different, for each is different. For each is, we use lambda here. This is a lambda sign, okay? This is the lambda sign. So how to use the lambda sign, okay? Okay, I show you this all code in the editor because we can do more faster. Okay, so okay, so this is the code. <clears throat> so IntelliJ. So for each is basically one by one value it will take. It will check the condition if it is a percentage two is reminder is zero, then it will print even, otherwise it will be odd. So this for each will be printing yeah, all the values, right? It will be printing whether it's a even or odd, it will be doing, but here we are using Lambda. So Lambda is used for single, single value. You can take it each and every value one by one and do operation, okay? Okay, so you can see here, this is even number, this is odd number, this is even number, this is odd number. This is coming because of this. And the another one is I want to add some suffix. So like I'm I'm adding, I'm iterating each element, element, and I'm saying more simple way we can write this code. We can write, uh, suppose I have a list, right? So I can write more simple way, list dot for each. And I say X is lambda, okay, X, lambda and i say print ln x okay if i want to add some so if i have to add something so i can use and slash and character you can use you want to make it new line right okay so this one is uh, uh Let's start for each print ln. If you have more than one statement you want to do, like my data second, right? It's coming each value it's coming. So it's very simple way you can write like this, okay? But suppose you want to do two operations. So in that case, you need a loop. So you need a one braces and here you need a one braces and you can write multiple statement in the braces. Okay, so you can write multiple statement in the braces. You can say here, like this is the one print ln and you say something 
I want to um, do my data one. Okay. So one first it will do my data, then my data one, like this will be running in the multiple statement. Okay. So Lambda is basically, you don't need to define any body. Okay. You don't need to create any function name, anonymous function. So Lambda is anonymous function. So we don't need to specify any name directly. We can give the body. We can give the body by using Lambda. So Lambda symbol and I can give the body. Okay. Then other example, like I want to iterate by two. So it will print the value. Okay. Break. I already told. Okay, Scala comment. Scala comment is like three types of comment, like double slash sign. So it's a single line comment. Okay, and if you have the single slash star star slash star star slash, it's the same Java, right? It's the same Java. So this statement will not be executed, right? It's a comment, right? So comment is so when I do main object dot main. So I'm printing only one, right? So this this is the comment. Okay, and one is a document comment is there, like we, on the top of the method, we can define, uh, like uh, we can define the comment, class level comment also there, so we can define, okay. Now this is the fundamental one is completed. Next is the functions. So how to use the functions. So functions we know, right, it's a reusable component, okay. Like when we define a function, we can define a type of parameters while passing the function and you have a return type of function by colon. So Scala syntax, you have to keep remember, def is a keyword, then function name and pass the parameters and colon is a return type, okay? If you are defining in the other language like Java, so Java, we have to use no def keyword. There we use the scope, we define public, private, like a scope, method of scope. And then we define the return type. Before the function name, return type comes in Java. Okay, but here is a return type is coming after colon. So syntax vary, okay. So this uh, function, like how we can create our own function and this function, we call it here. So when we are calling function, okay. And uh, this function is in the class, but outside the main, because in the Scala, you know, Java, you know, there is a static keyword is needed because this main is a static. And static is uh, like a keyword in Java, like uh, when we want to use a static main, right? It means no need to create an object of this class, right? In the Java, but here there is no static keyword. Object itself is a static. Okay, object is itself is called the static, right? The object means it's a main function, main class. Okay, it's a main class where main function you keep it in object. And this is itself is a static. So singleton design pattern is there. So you remember right in the Scala Java, we use the static uh, for the singleton. But here, the, the main object is itself is a singleton. Singleton means only and only one object will be there. We cannot have another copy of that object. So it will be using the same object. So it is making, making it reusability, okay? So singleton is a design pattern. This is a creational Java design pattern. The design patterns are same, inheriting from the Java to Scala. Okay, so whatever, so every Java code you can easily convert into the Scala. Okay, so it's not nothing difficult like Scala to Java, Java to Scala, right? It is easy to convert. Okay, just we know need to know how to change the function body, how to define the like when you are defining. So here we have to give the data type instead of where or well, right? Because Java is a strict data type. Okay, because we have to specify left side the data type, right? Okay, whether it's a class type or it's a primitive type, any type. Okay, so I'm creating a simple function. So here, one more thing is the function is like if you can see the difference here. Here is the equal sign is there, and here is no equal sign. Here is just we are defining a function body. Here also I'm defining function body. So here means here like basically I'm just using the equal sign. Also I can use to define a function, right? And there is no need to define a return type, no need to type a return keyword because it will be last statement will be understood return. So if return is not there, it will be understood as a void, like a unit. Unit is a default return type, okay? So default return type is unit, okay?
Okay, I'm calling the main object dot main null. Okay, so even I put it equal or if I don't put it equal, both are working. If I, it is nothing matter. Okay, so. Both are working, right? Whether you put it equal or not equal. So, so it is basically, it is creating a one variable a 10 and whatever value is coming x and it is plus and then it is returning the value. And after getting a return value, I'm just going to print this. Initially, I'm taking a parameter here because you can see here args0. So here is when you call the class object. So you will be calling a different way. Here, last time I told, right? Like how to, if you try just main object dot main null, so then you will get a null pointer. Why null pointer? Because it is expecting some input value ARGS zero. So if you say, okay, I pass three value here. Okay. But will it work? Three will not work, right? It is understanding integer three, but it need a array of a string. So array of a string, you have to pass like an array and then pass three value. Oh. String array we have to pass. So now three you are passing and three plus 10 is 13. So now my result is coming 13, okay? If I want to pass the parameterize, so suppose my function is this and I want to pass the parameterize so I can pass the parameter. And when I'm calling 10 and 20, it will give me the result 30. Recursion function. Recursion function is function call itself, right? We know about factorial function, Fibonacci function, Fibonacci series. So I want to do recursion. So simply I want to create a recursion. So recursion is uh, So what is the recursion here? Recursion is uh, when this function is called itself, because here, this function example, this function example is a recursive here. So when I call first time 15 comma two, I'm passing 15 and two. So my B value is not zero. It will come in else and it will make it 15 plus 15 comma two minus one, okay? Now my value will become 15 plus 15 plus 15 comma minus one minus one. Now this time my value is zero. Okay. So it will come in the B equal to zero and it will return zero. So my final output will be 15 plus 15, 13. So 13 is coming recursive. So if I want to make it the same like factorial, so I say my factorial function is taking a one input value because I, I have to pass factorial and factorial means the the values from the starting from the number to one multiply okay five four three two one three two one like six okay so if i'm passing a number and it is returning the number so i have a termination condition the termination condition is when a value become one then i will return one otherwise if my value is not coming one so what i should do i take it the current value, whatever my value is there, multiply of one less than value. So what you are doing first time five into four, and then again, you are doing five into four into factorial of uh, uh, three, four, uh, four, that will be three, four minus one. And again, you are doing five into four into three and factorial of three minus one, that is a two. Again, like this, it is going to do, and then you are getting final result. So let's try what the five because five factorial we know, we can calculate. Okay, so when I do, because this, this five value, you can pass it as a parameter also. But okay, in this one, I'm not using as a ARGS zero, so I cannot do. Okay, so I will be doing null. So I'm getting the 120.
Okay, so you guys prepare for the Fibonacci. Same thing we have to do Fibonacci. Fibonacci is like a series where we have initial two numbers, the zero and one. But after that, you have to make it zero plus one will become one third number, then one plus one, two, two plus one, three, three plus two, five, five plus three, eight, eight plus five, 13, 13 plus eight, 21, 21 plus 13 is 34. So you have to print up to 55. So like 10 number, 10 Fibonacci number you print, it will be coming 55. Okay. So this is a recursive way you, um, you can try. Okay. So when I run main object, so I'm getting a 120. 120. Oh, this is the uh, Fibonacci. This is not a old one. So Fibonacci. Ti. Okay, 34 is coming. So actually it is considering the 10, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have to give, I think, 14, uh, I think after 34 plus, I think next will come, right? I give 11. Thirty four plus 21, that will become 55. So. Okay, so we are printing the 55. Okay, but this is printing the series, but I want the total sum. Okay, if you write like this code, it will come like this. Okay, because here I'm printing every number right here in the loop. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so function parameter with default value. If you don't pass the function value, it will take a default value. So you can define some default value. Okay, suppose I'm passing both the value. So it will take it 15 plus 2, 17. If you are passing only first value, so second is the default. If you are not passing any value, it is taking both the values default, 0 plus 0. So default value concept is there in the programming languages. Okay, so we can use. But this is going as an index, like zero position zero. First value is the first value, second is the second. But suppose you want to change the order. So in that case, you can go by name, right? You can pass by name and you are using in the function also name. So A to A and B to B, right? That way it will do, okay? It is clear so far? So higher order function is a function which is taking as a function as a parameter because higher order function is a decorator in the in the PySpar, Python. Okay. So there is also higher order function when function is taking as a parameter and returning or maybe returning as a function as a parameter. Okay. So here I'm passing another function a multiplied two. So this a multiplied two is a passed as a this function I'm passing as a function example. So when I'm passing as a function and then, then it is uh, passing this entire function as a value in the parameter. Okay. Then I'm using it in my, in my body of the function, the existing function. Okay. So I'm using it. So this one is called higher order function. Okay. So higher order function is like the map, flat map, filter. These are the inbuilt functions are there in the spark. These are all higher order function. Okay, so these all are the higher order function. Okay, so higher order function is there. Anonymous function lambda, we already seen the lambda. So lambda is like, I'm just defining the body. 
after the equal greater than sign. Okay. So I'm behind. Another feature is the currying. Okay, currying is basically when I have a less number of parameter. So while I'm doing any operation, I should not pass all the parameters. So I will use the underscore. Okay. So these are very special feature of the Scala. Okay, because some features are not there in the Python or other programming language. Okay. Hmm. So the use of currying is like you have three parameter, but parameter you are not giving comma separated here. Generally, you define function, you give comma separated. Here is a different way is there. It is in the round bracket is there. So any parameter is not provided. Suppose two parameter provided now and whatever result is coming in this result, you will pass the third parameter and then you will get the final result. Okay, so 10 and 10 you pass first time and then next time you pass the another next 10. Okay, so next time you pass in the third time, second time, and then you will get the result of 10 plus 10 plus 10, 30. So sometimes what happens in your code, you are you are not having your, your values, but you have to write a function. So you can write a function with the all expected value. So whenever values will come, it will do the, it will uh, pass the parameter to the function and then it will be calculating, okay? So this result will be 30, okay? So when we run this code, so it will be, nested function is function call inside the function that is nested function okay like suppose i have a add function and another function i'm calling inside this add to so it will be calling when you're passing three parameter so it will call the nested function first it will do 10 plus 10 20 and then it will call 10 plus 10 again it will call this this function with the two parameter so whatever result of this inner function it will be passed to the same function again so then final result will be 30, 10 plus 10 plus 10. Okay. The last thing is in the function is variable argument. So when we pass the where arg side, so we are not sure, right, how many parameters can be passed. So we use the star. So when I'm passing a star means if parameters suppose only five parameters are there or, or four parameters are there. So it will calculate the result based on the number of parameters are passed. Okay, so based on the number of parameters, it will do the calculation of the result and then it will do. So that is the advantage of using. You can take it like a string star or integer star, any type of parameter type you can take it. Okay, so now I'm calling this 24 is coming. Suppose if I change the value here. So your, your sum is automatically changed. You don't need to change the function. You don't need to change the function. Just simply you can. Okay. So now its sum is 50. Okay. So this is called the variable argument. Okay. Go through this one. I already shared the this all parameters things. This all uh, document I shared. Okay. So. So tomorrow we'll do the class. Okay. I want to finish this Kala tomorrow. Okay. So I will do class. Okay. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So who are interested for the Scala, they can join tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Thank you.